Screw terminals are really handy to have on different microcontrollers, but unfortunately they're exceedingly rare. Today we'll make ourselves a breakout board with screw terminals, the SPI broken out, I2C broken out, and even a prototyping area. We'll design the board in free software called KeyCAD, we'll have PCBWay.com fabricate the PCBs, then we'll test it out and see how we did. These days there's a ton of options for PCB design for the programs themselves. We're going to use a free program called KeyCAD, but you can use Easy EDA, Fritzing, uh, tons of different ones like Eagle, Altium, and other free ones as well. KeyCAD has most of the libraries and footprints already done or available, and if you can't find them within the program, well, a quick search on GitHub will find the ones you're after in most cases. For a breakout board, things are pretty simple. We're just going to have our screw terminal connections straight out from our pins on our microcontroller. Not much to it. The only deviation here is we're going to add a breakout area for some prototyping with no connections, as well as we'll separate the SPI and I squared C lines just to make them nice and easy to work with. I am most definitely not an expert in any EDA or circuit board design, but I muddle through pretty good. If I can do it, you can do it too. Basically a bunch of global labels here uh, just to match the pins on the microcontroller and then we duplicate them all and just attach them to our header pins or screw terminals. Easy. That's all there is to it. Once we're happy with everything laid out on our schematic, then we can go ahead to the actual PCB portion. I've skipped ahead because the tutorial here really wouldn't serve you for routing this because I'm not that good at it. I just muddle through until I ended up with this. Just route all the wires to their connections. Uh, you could even auto route this board, no problem. The auto router would probably work. Um, yeah, nothing to it. We're set. We have our SPI, I2C prototyping area, all of our screw terminals. We shift things around as we need be, add some labels to make ourselves nice and happy and make this board kind of what we want it to be. When we're happy with all the board routing and placements, we generate the Gerber files through the plot menu. We zip these up and upload them to PCBWay.com Gerber Viewer. I'm finding this viewer to be just about the best lately to get a look at the Gerber files and make sure the boards are matching what I want them to be. And in this case, they look pretty good. Pretty simple, not much to it. And on the main page here, we want to check out and see if there's any deals going on. In this case, we're just going to pick the 10 boards, 10 by 10, which is 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, and go through and pick all of our options. Basically, default for most things is going to be fine here. We're going to change the color and order a little bit different color on the boards. We're going to have them panelize them. That way, we get more boards out of each one instead of just 10. We can get multiple on a panel. And yeah, nothing to it. You can check out all the different options. There's help text for everything and pick what suits your project the best. Go ahead and order. A few days later, we have a nifty little package came from DHL with all these nicely sealed up Wemos D1 mini boards. They have now come to life. What we made on the computer is a real board that we can really hold in our hands. Pretty cool. This is always like Christmas for me. I just love unpacking a board that I've designed myself, even though these are not complex and they're not even what most people would consider good. They're real basic, simple stuff. The routing I'm sure could be a lot better and a lot more fancier things we could do and different graphics, but they're mine and I'm quite happy with how they will fill the need for my projects and hopefully yours too. Assembly is super straightforward. In this case, I'm going to use some extensions here, some female headers. That way I can take the Wemos D1 Mini in and out and reuse it in other projects. You could solder it right in place permanently if you like, but I like reusability here. And especially with these screw terminal ones, I can put this into a stationary project in my house or whatever. And it's going to be pretty cool. The only thing I wish I would have done is make the board a little bit bigger and have some different mounting options, some mounting holes, but eh, it's a minor shortcoming. Assembly is super straightforward. Solder up all of our pins and all of our screw terminals with some good high quality solder and a good hot iron.
You'll see in the center between the Wemos D1 Mini pins, there's another set of unpopulated holes as well. That's an additional breakout that we can use to run jumper wires or bodge wires over to our prototyping area off of the same outputs from the Wemos D1 Mini without using the screw terminals, or use both at the same time. Handy dandy. And what we're left with? Pretty cool. I'm happy with how this turned out. I finally have something that I can integrate into stationary projects and easily terminate and remove wires as I need. Basically very reusable, very user friendly and really good for like a stationary IoT project. I'll make up a handy little 3D printed case or maybe laser cut one for this as well. Final step with this board and any board I have made is to just ohm them out and make sure the terminals are what I think they are between each. It's hard to check all of them to each other. You have to trust in your design a little bit and your net lists, make sure that uh, there was no conflicts, but uh, a quick ring out between them, make sure that we don't have any solder bridges or anything before we fire up the microcontroller. It wouldn't be good to have the micro pulled low on any of the pins, dead shorts or anything. Uh, depending on what code we have uploaded, it could do damage. So yeah, a little bit of time with the fluke, you're all set. As I do with all my projects, they're all in a GitHub repository, including all the source code, all the Gerber files are here. You can have these boards made yourself, no problem. You can take my KiCad files and improve upon them, adapt the board to whatever you need it to be and take the project forward from there. As well, I've put these into my store as a kit form. If there's interest, I'll manufacture kits as we go. I've made up a couple of them. In case you want to just buy this and not have it made yourself, uh, you can buy them from my store, no problem. I'll ship them anywhere in the world. Thanks for supporting these projects. Good luck in all your own projects. Click a thumbs up down below if you like this video, if you like things like this. See you next video.